Before you panic or believe random WhatsApp messages, stop here. If you have your Infosys exam scheduled on 4th of January and still you are confused whether you have to carry your laptop, what will happen in the exam center, how the interview process will work. So this video is for you to clear all your doubts. Make sure you watch this video till end because in this video I will share you all the tips and techniques how you have to approach the questions. Even if you are noob, if you haven't solved the questions yet, coding questions yet, I will tell you the tips how you can write the code at least that will help you to uh, pass at least two or three test cases. Okay, so don't miss out this video and I will be covering this video in a very short span of time. So let's not discuss many things. And if you are new to this channel, just make sure you subscribe my channel. And if you find this video helpful, uh, do like it. Uh, let's move further. So the very first thing that uh, Infosys exam is going to be in center exam. So you don't need to carry your own laptop. So this is the very basic doubt that you guys are facing. So you have to, you don't have to uh, carry your laptop. They will give the computer systems. You will assign to a uh, lab the college labs and from there you have to give your exams okay so without wasting time let's move further to the main point of this video the test structure and the question strategy how you have to proceed uh, even if you don't know coding even if you haven't practiced yet how you have to do if i tell my strategy to pass this exam uh, uh, the very first thing that we should discuss first like we are having four coding questions in this exam yeah four coding questions will be there but you have to attempt any three. Okay, this was the major doubt that many of the students were having. So this is the thing. There will be four coding questions, but you have to just solve three questions out of that. Okay, let's move further. Now, here's the most important advice that I would like to give you. Your primary goal should be to solve at least one question completely. So in this, how you have to proceed, okay? There are many students who are from non-technical background. I'm sorry, not non-technical, non-core background, like from civil, mechanical, electrical. So for those students, I am giving them a tip. Like if I try my strategy, what I will do? First of all, I will focus on accuracy rather than over quantity, okay? And many students make this mistake. They will try to solve the three question and end up solving nothing full. So don't do this. This is the waste of, uh, you know, time and it's not a good strategy. It's a poor strategy, basically. What Infosys expects? So Infosys does not expect you to solve all the questions. They just want the accuracy. OK, even if you are solving one question with full accuracy, your chances of getting selection is very high. Now, how you have to uh, approach these tests? Uh, let's suppose. Uh, if you have secured uh, full marks in at least one question, then the remaining uh, questions based on their difficulty you have to attempt, okay, and the time left. What this helps, like if you use this approach, it will help you to manage time better, reduce mistakes, and ensure that you don't lose marks due to incomplete or incorrect answers, okay, and it will help you to stay calm and positive. Uh, this is one of the human mindset. If you will be able to solve at least one question at the beginning, it will help you to gain a confidence uh, from inside. You started feeling like that. OK, this exam is easy. I have solved one question. Now, now I have to approach to other questions. OK, so by staying calm and prioritizing the correctness, you can manage your time effectively. And that's how you can score maximum and clear this exam. OK, so. The very first priority should be to solve at least one question completely with full accuracy. This will ensure you to secure, you know, good marks. After that, you should attempt other questions. OK, and the very first thing that you have to do, first of all, go through the all the four questions, just read them out. OK, and find out the question that you feel very confident and feel that, yes, I can solve this. OK. And generally, the first question is easier, but not always. Sometimes uh, the uh, like paper setter can play with your mind. That's why I'm saying. So try to read all the three questions and then come to the conclusion and choose the question that you feel uh, you will be able to solve. OK. As I mentioned, focus on completing one question fully. This will help your uh, help you to get your chance short, uh, chances of getting shortlisted for the interview. 
even if it takes you two to three hours, it's completely fine, guys. That's what I'm saying. Just try to maximize your accuracy rather than uh, jumping from one question to another question. If you solve one question fully, it will help you out. Okay. Then the other thing that you have to do, you have to manage the time. How you have to do the time management. Okay. Uh, your goal should be very simple. Okay, pass at least two or three test cases correctly. This is uh, I am saying for those candidates who don't even know ABC of coding. Okay, those who are not that much good in coding. And the very first step, don't panic. Uh, first of all, how you have to divide your time. You will be having three hours with you. Three hours will be in your hand, and then you have to spend. Two hours solving one question completely. This is what I am saying. If you are totally new in this field, just give two hours to solve one question, okay? And use one hour to attempt the other question and try to pass partial test cases. That's what I said, right? But your main aim is to solve one question completely and should pass all the test cases. If you will do this. You will definitely get your interview call, okay? And the first thing that you have to focus is on logic building, okay? Not on optimization. This is one of the tip that I want to share to you guys. First of all, forget about the advanced concept, okay? Ask your mind to forget everything about the advanced concept. Use simple conditions like loops and straight uh, straightforward thinking, okay? And a simple solution that works for small input is enough to pass initial test cases. Okay, don't try to give complex inputs and all. And the third point that I would like to share with you guys, those who are uh, you know not that much good in coding, and even if they are good in coding, but stuff, what you have to do, always start with the simplest test case. Okay, uh, ask yourself if the input is the smallest or most basic value. What should be the output? In this case, your code will work. Okay, if you have already passed at least one test case, then um, you have to handle edge cases carefully. Check things like zero values, empty inputs, or a single element input. These kind of things just try to check. Okay, just handling these properly can help you pass one or two test cases. Okay, you can. Be able to pass one or two more test cases if you handle these things. And apart from that, uh, many students what they do they waste their time trying to write the perfect solution. So instead of writing a perfect solution, aim for a working solution, guys. If your test cases are passing, it doesn't matter what you have written in your code. Okay, so don't try to you know decorate your code. Try to make your code working. Okay. And a partial correct uh, solution that runs is far better than a perfect idea that you never implement. This is the code I have, uh, you know, got from somewhere. But yeah, this is the code. And the uh, most important thing that I would like to say: uh, don't leave the question blank. Okay, even if your logic is not hundred percent correct, write something meaningful. Okay, sometimes your code passes the hidden test cases unexpectedly. There are hidden test cases as well, right? So you can do this. You have to give your best in all the questions. I would say. Now moving further, <coughs> what important topics you need to cover? I have already covered this video as well, so I don't give much time on this. The main focus of this video is to tell you how you have to solve the uh, test cases. J just like I told you, uh, if you do like that, sometimes your hidden test case will pass. Okay, so that's why I'm saying. uh do this thing instead of aiming for working solution just write the partial code and possibly it can run your hidden test cases okay so in this you have to prepare for dynamic programming recursion trees graphs bitwise operator if you have time you can prepare and if you don't know the basics of these topics then this test will be very difficult this is true but yeah if you don't know you can't do anything Let's see the preparation plan for the last three four days. This is the most important thing of this video. How you have to prepare? If your exam is on fourth January, you still have three to four days left, right? If you don't go for the uh, New Year celebration, then you have. And also, if you are not wasting your time, okay? Then 
प्रैक्टिस टेन टू ट्वेल्व क्वालिटी क्वेश्चन डेली दिस इज द थिंग दैट यू कैन डू इफ यू आर सम वन हु इज ऑलरेडी प्रैक्टिसिंग एंड ऑल देन दिस इज फॉर यू गाइज यू कैन प्रैक्टिस थ्री फोर डायनेमिक प्रोग्रामिंग क्वेश्चन थ्री फोर फ्रॉम ट्रीज थ्री फोर क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम ग्राफ्स एंड फोकस ऑन गुड लेवल क्वेश्चन डोंट ट्राई टू सॉल्व वेरी इजी लेवल क्वेश्चन ट्राई टू सॉल्व गुड लेवल क्वेश्चन ओके प्रैक्टिस प्लेटफॉर्म्स आई हैव ऑलरेडी मैंशन लीड कोड कोड फोर्स यू कैन यूज even if you solve 30 40 good quality question in these days it can significantly improve your chances because your mind will get trained to solve these kind of questions and you will be definitely crack this interview okay so try to solve these questions so that uh, your mind get trained and you will be able to solve this question <coughs> now the very important thing how to solve a difficult dp question in exam this is the thing which one should answer okay suppose uh, like this question how to solve just a second guys yeah sorry for the interruption so what you have to do suppose you get a dynamic programming question and you feel stuck so what you have to do first of all forget db for a moment first think of a, a problem in ter terms of recursion okay first try to write a recursive solution rather than thinking uh, for db okay ask yourself like what is the simplest input and what should be the answer for that this will help you to you know solve 50% of your problem then clearly uh, define the state now define the dp state in simple word ask yourself like okay you have to ask yourself answer till that index i or using j con with condition j so just think on that if you can explain the state in one english sentence you are on the right track okay if recursion works on the for some test cases optimize it using memoization okay so do this thing after that if needed convert it to tabulation to this thing okay so you have to approach the thing in this way and keep asking yourself question how can i reach the current state from a previous state okay then you can think on that usually it takes like take it or leave it you will have two answers in mind okay then write the transition slowly and if it is not optimized that's also fine but you have to ask the question to yourself okay and i would say start with the base cases first of all and then uh, uh, like base cases are the easiest one okay so uh, you have to uh, think of the base cases first then write the brute force or whatever approach you want to then you can add it like you can upgrade it once recursion is working add a dp array or a map to store the result and just one line if already computed return it so do this thing go like in this way this single skill can help you to solve at least one full question that's what i'm saying you guys to go with the you know proper approach and then uh, you know don't stop optimizing too much to be honest don't try to optimize for space or time in an exam because uh, you know it's it's not that much mandatory your test cases should work fine the main thing so do this thing and if you are completely stuck totally stuck what you have to do if you are totally stuck you have to do write the function signature handle the basic cases and write partial logic never leave the question blank because partial logic can still pass some test cases so this is the thing this is the thing you have to keep in your mind and just do it just do it i would say <laughs>